Hi guys. Well, it is another brutally cold winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is up to a balmy 24 degrees here. 24 degrees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in upstate New York. And it is a Tuesday, December 27th, 2022, as we wind down the last week of this uh, <laughs> of this crazy year and <clears throat> so I'm glad to be back where I can get back to my daily dose of doom every morning with this uh, website I discovered fairly recently called medium.com where I am uh, getting introduced to all these new voices down here in the Doomosphere never heard of before and just trying to make them aware trying to make you aware of them so uh, I'm just going to we're, we're just going to dabble around a few of these things in my daily digest of doom and center on one of them but let's take a brief view of the ones that did not quite make the mark for today's chronicle of the collapse for a couple of reasons. And the first one is this long book length, for all, all intents and purposes, this one of the best articles I have read about overpopulation in quite a while. This is from this fellow named Jared Brock. Jared Brock is helping us navigate life in an age of democratic destruction, ecological collapse, and economic irrelevance. And today's missive uh, excellent missive is titled Elon Musk is completely wrong about overpopulation you know uh, talking about Elon Musk claiming that a collapsing birth rate is the biggest danger civilization faces by far and then uh, Jared uh, you know, basically says he is Elon is 180 degrees wrong about that and talking about how it is overpopulation is the number one problem facing this planet is too many people. Uh, it is breeders are the reason. So just to give you an example, okay. Let's see, I'm just, here, here's just an example of this excellent essay. <clears throat> the idea that we should continue adding billions of people to our already overtaxed planet because we might see declines in the future is frankly a preposterous notion. If your house is on fire, do you add more wood before starting to put out the flames? Any meaningful population declination is not going to happen in our lifetime. We are on track to grow it to at least 10 billion, potentially even 12 billion by the century's end, before we crest and trend slowly back towards sustainability. But we don't have 100 years. Each generation's job, each generation's job is to deal with the challenges in their time and ours, meaning our generation's challenge is a collapsing ecosystem caused by overpopulation. So uh, he goes on and on with this. I'm cheering the man on. There is one little bitty problem 
is that Jared Brock is a proud new father. Jared Brock understands as well as anybody that if your house is on fire, you do not add more wood before starting to put out the flames. You know, all of this stuff, of course, you know, obviously, uh, I have been labeled, a, you know, just full, uh, just so you understand, uh, I do not have any kids, for anyone who does not know this, that I got a vasectomy at age 22 before having any kids. You know, I am always being called a hypocrite for driving a gas-sucking car, for eating my fellow earthlings, for just, I don't know, burning 46,000 gallons of jet fuel to go have an interview on soft white underbelly explaining to the clueless moron normies why humans need to go extinct. But, uh, you know, this old, the old hypocrite that someone uh, who drives a truck cannot talk about the, you know, fossil fuels killing the planet. And, but, but the shit with breeders, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just let them trigger me that uh, these people who understand, who clearly understand what's going on on this planet, and then bringing a child into this planet uh, in the 21st century, knowing that that is uh, on every level uh, the most moronic thing. A per it is the most clueless, moronic, uh, indefensible thing that, that uh, anybody can do on this planet. Jared Brock, shut up. Practice what you preach. Put a cork in it, dude. Anyway, so much for Jared Brock. Okay, here is a fellow I like named Michael Campy. Michael Campy, I just do stuff. Sometimes I write, sometimes I scream at the walls, and sometimes I stare out the window and what, what Michael uh, is doing today is describing a day in the life of a doomer. I thought it might be fun to give normies, parentheses, non-doomers. So if you're a doomer, anyone who is not a doomer is a normie. I thought it might be fun to give normies a glimpse into what a day in the life of a doomer is like. And then what Michael does, and it really is funny, but uh, it takes a while for the joke to unfold, is so he describes an ordinary day of his life as a doomer to these normies who, uh, I, I don't know what normies think doomers do. So he talks about, he wakes up in the morning, uh, he takes a dump, he drinks a cup of coffee, uh, let's see, my days look pretty much the same through the week, yeah, uh, okay, uh, he, he goes through his morning routine, uh, he does five to ten minutes of stretching, I sit on the porch and watch the squirrels play. Then it's time to check the various Doomer sites to see how much more fucked we are today than yesterday. After that, I will go for a walk. Then it's time for a shower, some breakfast, bit of playing the piano. Well, I think you get the joke. He goes on throughout the rest of his day and he never mentions being a doomer again. Between his cup of coffee and going for a walk, 
it's time to check the various Doomer sites to see how much more fucked we are today than yesterday. And, and then he never thinks about it again. He goes through his day being a human uh, on the planet. Uh, but of course, normies would not get the joke in this, thinking that Doomers, that, you know, we spend our entire day in lives. Okay, here is from Crystal Rivers, PhD, the population crash ahead, 8 billion, and adding more, the dangerous cliff we are on, and she just goes through the usual list of nothing original here, of all the ways that this population could crash. She doesn't say whether or not she thinks it should crash, but anyway, so then of course, Umer Hack, the king of the Doomosphere, uh, why 2022 felt like the year of doom. The year three doom loops began ripping our world apart. 2022 was the year a series of doom loops kicked off in earnest at the heart of our civilization and they have already affected our, our lives, sometimes in dramatic ways, only we may not have noticed their civilizational global impact. And yet, that is precisely what is happening. If it feels like our civilization is coming undone, that is because it is, and that, in turn, is because there are now a series of doom loops at work circling <clears throat> like great Geyer's hurricanes at its very heart. And, uh, and then Umar Hack breaks down all of the various doom loops. Uh, but again, uh, Umer has 187,000 followers. You can follow the self-proclaimed vampire over at medium.com. But I am going to go with this fellow uh, who's, I, I guess his working name is Indy.ca. Indrajit Samarahiva is a writer from Sri Lanka, grumpily in Oxford for a while. So he's low over there studying at Oxford and over there in England. And in between, I guess, uh, his studies, uh, he is writing about how nature is becoming a simulation. Now, I'll call him Indica. Indica is, uh, he, he, he is a bit of a racist, and I don't think he would deny this. Uh, Indica, uh, you know, from Sri Lanka, he's very, like, dark brown, and he blames virtually 100% of what's going on on this planet on white people. It is 100% honky's fault. That if you are a honky, it's your fault we are doomed. If you're not a honky, you are completely, totally innocent. So, you know, I have a little bit of problem with that. And he is an absolute overpopulation denier. Uh, I, I mean, there is one sentence in here which I am not going to insult my intelligence or yours uh, by reading aloud. It, it is completely offensive. Uh, th this guy is right up there with Elon Musk, okay? He is an absolute clueless moron when it comes 
to uh, the overpopulation issue. It is honkies and it is capitalism and it is white capitalists that are destroying the planet, but to the degree that he is correct that it is white capitalists destroying the planet, uh, I will share this excellent essay with you now, How Nature is Becoming a Simulation. Yes, take it away, Indikoff. Children love animals, they love nature, and yet this love is twisted to sell commodities, cartoons, clothes, and otherwise a simulation of nature. Children grow up surrounded by stories of the wild and almost no direct experience of it. These simulations are simultaneously killing off the natural world. Every kid's book is an epitaph, every documentary a mausoleum. At this moment, there are more listings for lion products on Amazon, over 70,000, than there are lions in the wild, about 20,000. The range of Amazon Prime vans only increases, while the range of lions only decreases. These facts are not unrelated. The lie we tell both children and adults is that we just need to be nicer and more aware of animals, and that the problem is a few bad people. And then, of course, he spends the rest of the article talking about why the problem is a few bad people. Anyway. <clears throat> yes, uh, the lie we tell both children and adults is that the problem is a few bad people, usually black poachers or strange Chinese medicine. The truth is that the problem, in this case lion poaching, which has nothing to do nothing to do with black poachers or strange Chinese medicine, according to Endicott, nothing whatsoever. The truth is that the problem is systemic. The system producing lion toys for children and lion documentaries for adults is the problem. Capitalism has a relentless appetite for land and resources, and as long as it grows, the range of lions and all other creatures will inevitably decline, which is 100% true. We don't get that these species are already reduced to a ceremonial sliver of existence. They are built to roam the earth, but that earth is now bisected by highways and high tension electric lines. The land, the water, the very air are being sucked away relentlessly by another life form, capital incarnate. The few humans that sell out the rest of life on earth to these AI climate colonizers are rewarded handsomely with what are ultimately trinkets and toys, yachts and bad marriages, plaques outside the Natural History Museum and private islands. Instead of a nature to live in and inherit, our children get a massive simulation. Lion backpacks, wolf hats, tiger cereal. Our children watch Peppa Pig 
and then eat horrifically caged and enslaved pigs. Capitalism sells both love of animals, souls, and brutal greed for their flesh. The hypocrisy is only a commercial breakaway. It is the carbon spewing machines which inherit the earth. Nature itself is rendered in pixels and threads and plastic. It is a death mask. Nature is a death mask more real than life itself. The simulation is brighter, cuddlier, always in higher zoom and center frame. It is a better experience of nature while nature itself is battered and obliterated. I always find the way we use nature to sell stuff to children especially morbid. Do lions and tigers get any royalties from all the time their image is stolen? Can they use that to buy land? To exist within this capitalist system that has made property not only private, but the sole domain of one species? No, of course not. Maybe you get some tag on the book that some portion of profits is donating to the World Wildlife Fund. That the book itself is helping raise awareness of what? And then uh, the next sentence is, is where uh, he goes off in, into absolute land of denial and, and claiming that uh, capitalism and, and all of the problems that nature is facing have exactly zero to do with overpopulation. That there are no dots to be connected anywhere, according to Indica, between 8 billion consumers on this planet and the collapse of ecosystems and the, the stranglehold of capitalism. Despite the fact that Indica is a clueless moron uh, on this one subject, I'm not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater because I like this guy. Mm. It, I'm assuming meaning capitalism, is a farcical system wrapped around a tragedy. The capitalist system kills these animals, then sells a simulation of them back to our children, grinning and friendly for them to cuddle at night. Yes. Such a bonzo says, what is that thing? What is that? Such a what is that? Okay. <clears throat> I think of this as I sit in England, the masters of destroying nature while claiming to love it. People here, meaning in England, love their green spaces, their gardens, but that is also a simulation. This island was once home to vast temperate rainforest, now gardened and groomed into retreat. All the fields of grass are effectively horticultural concrete. All of the carefully tended gardens are just garnish on a diet of massive resource consumption and bloody red meat. People are fastidious about recycling while much of that recycling is just shipped overseas to pollute the same earth just at a distance and at the expense of other people. 
and maybe uh, IndyCar is not even aware of this, but as Manga Bay has been reporting for the past three weeks, no, where all of this uh, joke recycling and garbage is going, they just take it out to the countryside in England and just dump it uh, out in the countryside. So uh, it, it's it's not even shipped overseas any uh, where anymore. I think also of Norway proudly switching to electric cars while depending on fossil fuels for most of its exports. It's such rich hypocrisy. <clears throat> Nature exists here and across the white empire as a backup to advertising. The hill you climb in that new Jeep, that getaway you take in a jet, you know, like getting away to uh, Skid Row to talk about how humans are destroying the planet, you know, that getaway to take in a jet. The cartoon selling plastic toys to your children, each avatar of nature, each avatar of nature is, oops, where was I? Each avatar of nature, each avatar of nature is worse than an illusion. It is an assassin. You are an assassin, you little cuddly snow leopard. The Jeep spews out pollution, the airplane spews out even more, and plastic itself is a petroleum product. It's all propaganda from hostile AI, the corporate manifestation of elite greed we call capitalism, simulating the natural world for marketing purposes while free markets consume and destroy it outright. We roughly mark human civilization to the point that we started seeing cave drawings of animals flickering as moving images in the flame light. What we are really marking is the rise of the simulation, the artificial perception of the world which would consume more and more under its roving and searing eye. We have gone from wearing enameled jewelry of magnificent beasts to digging up their entire habitats to produce metal monsters which move and spew and which are, for all intents and purposes, artificially alive. They certainly naturally kill. We have gone from telling stories of animals in the dark to spinning up huge farms of servers that render their images on demand in high definition and surround sound. And those servers take land, take resources, and produce waste. The artificial kills the natural as it reproduces it. It is a dance of death, this simulation of life. We have been dancing since light first flickered off the shadows in a cave. We dance still as light flickers off the screen in our home theaters. Our dancing partner, you know, Mother Earth, that dancing partner, our dancing partner is nearly dead, but we carry the corpse around quite morbidly. We are a living nightmare, dancing with a dream. <laughs> there you go. We are a living nightmare with our little cute cuddly
Animal Simulations. Videos. I need to wrap this up because I gotta get uh, this heater cranked back up. Oh man, talking 41 degrees here tomorrow. I'll believe it when I see it. Get out there and enjoy dancing with a dream. Well, you still can. Bye, guys.